Thank you, Gustav. So, uh, <laughs> my name is Yelena, and I'm going to tell you uh, about data engineering technology. So, let's start with some things. Big data is getting super. So, let's say it's just do the information, does the one thing, does it well. It is a compiler, okay? So, there's no engine. It just compiles your code, makes pure SQL, and then send it to these guys to work with it. Okay? So we set good practices. So let's see what are those good practices. So first thing, let's go back to this lovely code. Okay, we don't want this monolith, okay? What we want, we want to split this in different modules. And then each of these modules is easy to debug, it's easy to test, and easy to maintain. That's the first thing. Next thing, we want version control. So you know how it goes, like if you version things yourself, version one, version two, version three, version final, version final two, version final final, and so on, you know? And if you don't do the proper versioning, and I know people like in school who work with SAS, they all have like this folder somewhere and everybody works on it, you know? No, that's not the way to do. We need proper version control. But in SAS, it's not so easy to get it. And in DBT, it just works out of the box. Testing. Okay, so we need to test everything. Uh, and uh, DBT makes it very easy. Basically, you have generic tests, and it's literally as easy as putting one word. Like, you put one word, and it does the test. You don't have to write anything else. If you want something different, you can have similar tests also. Uh, but we have a thing which is quite new here compared to software development. Okay? In software development, input for your software is usually easy. Okay? But in data, garbage in, garbage out. So we, we shouldn't just test your code or your logic. We have to test data. And this is what DBT introduces. Testing your data constantly. So, don't repeat yourself. So, uh, repetition is the root of all software evil. Why is this? Well, first, like if you just copy paste the same logic and then you want to change it, you have to change it everywhere. This is annoying. And also, very likely, you're not going to change it really everywhere. So, you don't want to do that. And Jinja and YAML are making it easy in uh, SQL and DBT to do that. You all put SQL, you actually have to repeat the same logic. But now you don't have to do that. You have variables, you have for loops, you have conditionals, you have macros, which work as functions, and you even have packages you can, where you can get the completed logic from. Uh, then you want to work, you want to have separate development and production environment because all the software, they're living things. And you want to have something working in production and be available to do that. In all the SQL, you would have to manually encode like writing to different tables and stuff. Here, you just put one flag and you can switch the environment super easy. And finally, documentation. Recently, I was looking for some data uh, in a data warehouse uh, we have, and it's a nightmare, you know, because kind of there is kind of documentation, but it's not really up to date, and like nobody likes to do that and, and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, you know how it goes. Um, in DBT, uh, documentation is created with basically one click, uh, one line, and enter, and so it's automatically created. There's a very small amount you have to do manually, you know? And this is kind of documentation which is useful, which is always up to date, and which is always there. Great. So, a lot of nice things, but I can hear some of you thinking, yeah, okay, this is nice. I can do the same in PySpark. You know, so why would I want to do this? Awesome, you can do it in PySpark, you do it in PySpark. This is not, this is a long discussion, and here is like Chris talking about this two years ago, and then a year ago it became in again when somebody else uh, started the discussion again. So if you ask me, should they use DBT or should they use PySpark in my organization? Uh, the thing is, first, Let's make one thing clear. These are two completely different things. One is just templating tool. So basically, remember, you just compile your SQL and you send it somewhere else. The other one is actual engine. But OK, they, they basically solve the same type of problems. So it's not a question of what kind of problem you have to solve. It's what kind of people you have and what kind of resources. And even more, what kind of people you have 
because resources nowadays they're cheap, they're easy to upgrade, you can always just use the cloud. People, as Pascal said, we are lacking people with the skills we need. And what we want to do, we want to empower the people we already have. What kind of people we have, we have data analysts. We have a lot of data analysts, and I myself taught quite a few of them. It's very easy to teach them DBT because they already know SQL. It's not so easy to teach them Python. <coughs> so, good. What's missing? There's still one thing missing. So, DBT puts together data analysts and data engineers, but who is not in the loop? Data scientists. Okay, so data scientists, you can't do all these things in SQL. Uh, first, you can't really uh, chain models uh, there, but also there are other things. Like when I teach DBT to people who know SQL, they're very happy, or people who don't know anything, they're very happy with SQL. But if I try to teach people who uh, have a lot of programming experience, SQL, they never happen with it. There's like, it's too rigid, there are all these different things like I can't do there, so they're always missing. You know, if you want to do, for example, generate a, a, the data set, a visual data set, do some kind of complex matrix stuff, uh, text parsing, all these things you can just do in Python, but you can't really do in SQL. So, uh, PySpark was actually doing the, uh, good here with uh, putting data scientists and data engineers together, but it would still leave out data analysts. We want them to do it again. Why is this important? You know? So, this is like this kind of standard situation. So, what's happening here? On this side of the wall, we have data scientists. They have their computer, they develop their model, and then poof, <laughs> throw the model to data engineer. And data engineer is like, okay, what the hell are we going to do with this? So they put that in production, you know, they take their DBT or PySpark or whatever, they put the thing in the production, you know, and then data scientist changes something, you know, and then he's like, okay, what do I do now? You know, what's happening here? And these two things kind of over time diverge, they're completely part of different uh, workflow, you know, and this is not what we want. We want everything to be in one code base. One pipeline, everybody on the same table working together. Uh, so basically, we want this all done. And DPT helps with that. Uh, uh, in October 2022, so a bit more than a month ago, there was a conference, and they announced that DPT now actually supports Python. I don't know how many of you heard about that already. Okay, a couple of you, nice. Um, I know you're really excited as I am about it. I'm very excited. I think it's so awesome. Uh, and uh, it's awesome because of like, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's kind of, well, I love DBT, but I always miss this Python stuff, you know? Like there's always something I can do much easier in Python. And being able to do everything the same, it's just awesome. Uh, so yeah, putting everybody together, right? But yeah, be careful. Uh, this uh, union is still in its infancy. I put my kids as a reference uh, where we are at the moment. So somewhere here, uh, there's a lot of uh, coming. So uh, be careful of how you use it. So don't think that you can do some deep learning there and don't stop using SQL. So it's not the idea that, you know, if SQL is still much better in certain tasks, so use SQL where it's good and Python where it's good. So to conclude, what do we want? We want uh, tools which are simple to use, uh, where we can you know, easily maintain them for a long time, where people collaborate, and DBT is a good example of this. It uses SQL, it is easy, adds good uh, software development practices, and with Python in, it makes it possible for data analysts, data engineers, and data scientists to work together on one code base. Thanks. Yes, Gabe, will tell us about organizations. <laughs>